Hello, I'm Marc Desgroseillers from Technical Support here at Pix4D and today I'm talking to you about the Index Calculator. The Index Calculator is a tab in the mapper that will give you a streamlined workflow to get all of the outputs that you're looking for in a precision agriculture project. And what do I mean by a precision agriculture project? Well, it's a project where the main objective is to compute the reflectance of the different features in your, in your field. And so the first output that you're looking for is the reflectance map. And you will all, uh, using the index calculator, you will also obtain an index map, such as the NDVI map. And then it will be possible to uh, colorize this map. Uh, colorizing this map will make the data analysis easier. Another output that you can get is the application file. So the, your field is going to be segmented into different regions according to the index values and um, there's going to be a shape file that's going to be gen generated that will uh, contain as an added information the amount of resources that should be uh, given to the different regions and this file can be put into a smart tractor if it accepts this kind of file. So it makes the whole process quite automatized. In many of these precision agriculture projects, uh, you're going to be using a radiometric calibration target. While it's not mandatory, it does allow to compare data sets taken in different days or under different conditions. And as such, uh, many users um, uh, have this calibration target and use, use it for, for, their, for their project. Uh, let me give you a few tips about how to best use this calibration target. First of all, it should be flat on the ground and not tilted. Uh, also, while you're taking the picture of the calibration target, it's important not to cast a shadow on the target. And for the, um, the region with the known reflectance, to not be overexposed or underexposed, because in this case, uh, the data is not usable. So that means that very often it's a good idea to take at least a few set of images to make sure that at least one set is good and can be used for radiometric calibration. Uh, this data should be inputted in the mapper before you start the third step of processing. So let's see in the software how you can give this data to the, to the mapper to get uh, radiometrically uh, precise uh, results. Let's see in the mapper how to input the calibration target values. So as you can see, here I haven't started the, the processing, so I can go in the processing options and I go in DSM orthomosaic and index and I go in the index calculator tab. You can see here that the different sensors have not been calibrated. This is a Sequoia project, so I'm going to click on calibrate and I'm going to uh, find the appropriate image. So you see here, this is the green sensor. So I browse to where my images are and I'm going to select the green image. You can see it here. I'm going to draw um, a rectangle around where in the, in the calibration region here with the known reflectance. I do a right click to finish the, the shape. Now you see it's important that this, this shape that I drew is completely inside the region. And the value here, I should know it. This should be provided by the manufacturer and I know that it's 192 for my particular target. This number is going to differ from target to target. And I click calibrate and now it's been done. So that's how you do it. I would repeat the same procedure for all the different sensors. And that's how you input the radiometric calibration target information in the mapper. One thing to note is that for uh, multi-spec uh, projects, as well as for Sequoia projects that are processed with version 2.2 or later and with the firmware version 1.1, this is done uh, automatically. So when the, the images of the radiometric calibration target are recognized and all this information is, is, um, is put in the mapper automatically. But if you use a different 
target or if you use an older version of the firmware on Sequoia, for example, you should go through these steps as well. We can see now uh, on the screen the index calculator window. And what's really nice about this is that the workflow is quite linear. You go from one step to the next and th this is how you're going to obtain your input. So the first step is the generation of the reflectance map. Now this, is, this reflectance map is really the core ingredient in the, in the precision agriculture uh, processing workflow. And so how is the mapper going to obtain this reflectance map? Well, it's going to compute a reflectance value for every pixel and it's going to take into account many different variables such as uh, the camera position, the, the angle between the camera and the feature. Um, if the information has been provided in the EXIF file, it's going to correct for uh, dark current, uh, vignetting, and uh, other effects. So really there are a lot of variables and, that are accounted for. And this is the most computationally intensive step. This is where we really leverage uh, the Pix4D Mapper engine and we use the 3D reconstruction to be able to compute accurate reflectance values. Once the reflectance maps have been generated, uh, you can produce an index map. Uh, index maps you can think of NDVI, so what does it do? It uh, takes into, in, into account the different information from the reflectance maps and it, and it um, puts them together using a mathematical formula in order to make the analysis easier. So in the case of NDVI, you want to be able to look at this uh, NDVI map and figure out what is the health of, uh, of your plant in the different regions. Um, once the index maps have, has been generated, you can colorize it again with the objective to make that an analysis easier. Um, and once you have these, these regions, uh, for the, the, depending on the index value, you can assign to each region a certain amount of resource that should be uh, spread over this, this, this region. So this resource, it could be fertilizer, but it could also be water, for example. And so you say, well, in this region, which has NDVI value between um, 0.5 and 0.7, I would like to apply um, a certain amount of resource. So you really segment your field according to the index values. And then you're going to be able to export this information into a shapefile. And this shapefile, you put it in your smart tractor if it accepts this uh, kind of input. Uh, it's also possible to export the colored index map if you need to share it. So it's going to be exported as a JPEG file, a TIFF file, or and a KML uh, file for uh, Google Maps. That's all I wanted to say about the index calculator today. Uh, I've ho I hope that what I've said is going to allow you to get the most out of Pix4D Mapper and I'll see you in the next video.